the Peacekeeper, the assassin who controls the battlefield, was a real thing. However, she's in the wrong time period, using the wrong weapons, and she's not actually supposed to be in war. Now, let me explain. Let's look at two-handing weapons from military history. Two-handing weapons didn't really become popular for a number of reasons. The first problem being missiles, and I'm not talking about the explosive kind. You see, if there's a hail of arrows darkening the sky, or javelins, or even rocks, shields are really useful for blocking said missiles. Just imagine this. A platoon of dual-wielding soldiers are all charging down the battlefield, and a contingent of archers has just fired at you and... Oh, you don't have a shield. And now there's skirmishers all chucking javelins at you, and... You still don't have that shield, but now you're being charged at from an enemy battalion. Form a shield wall, and you still don't have a shield. Yeah, dual wielding. Not as effective as just having a shield. Shields can also be used to punch with, shove back enemies, and form shield walls. Shields are large and can protect most of the body, depending on the type of shield, of course. And so they were used pretty extensively through the most of medieval history. Another reason for the lack of dual wielding in military history is simple. It's really, really difficult to pull off. If you have two regular sized weapons, the swing of one weapon is likely to clash with the swing of the other. And sometimes someone might just parry your right weapon and knock it into your left weapon, and now he's in control of both of your weapons. Not exactly the best strategy, and you can't even attack twice with the weapon. Maybe you could swing once with the white weapon and then just swing right away with the left weapon, but with a sword you can just swing down and then swing back up and, well, you normally swing at the same exact pace. So you don't even get any advantages of dual wielding, so no one ever really did it. So in war, two weapons were a bad idea. However, off the battlefield, you still needed to protect yourself, whether it be bandits or your mother-in-law. And carrying a giant bulky shield around you with all day has got to be a pain, and so the sword and buckler became one of the most prevalent self-defense tools. The buckler provided a powerful enough strike to hurt an opponent, could parry blows effectively, and was small enough to be carried around easily. It's essentially like picking a pistol over an assault weapon. While it's not as effective as the assault weapon, it's far more convenient. And so as time went on, the Middle Ages were drawing to a close, and the Renaissance was upon the world. Armor was changing to plate mail, and it was more protective that shields were becoming less and less common. And so more penetrative weapons were becoming the norm to bypass that armor. And around this time, the rapier was becoming common. It was sleek, easy to carry, fast, and had penetration power. And fashionable for nobles. Like, this was the gold jewelry of the day. Rapiers. And thus, everyone was enjoying them. And while the buckler was still very popular, a new sidearm was being carried for everyday use. The dagger. No longer only a sidearm for the knight, it was becoming an everyday tool for the common man, as well as a good self-defense weapon. And so with daggers and rapiers becoming more and more popular, it's only fitting that the style of rapier and dagger fighting would develop. Rapier and cloak fighting was also a thing, but I'm not even going to try to research that. And so, with more and more people gaining access to daggers and rapiers, schools of sword fighting taking off around the 14th century, the same century as the rapier, and the flair and impressiveness of fighting, rapier and dagger fighting truly took off. This technique can be found in Hema, which is historical European martial arts, and found in multiple treatises, which are fighting manuals on the art of sword fighting that survived in our practice today. However, there are other schools involving wielding two weapons. Japan, Mongolia, China, Indonesia all have a mention in their martial arts around dual wielding, just like in Hema. However, they all involve either a long or short weapon, or a short and short weapon, for the problems that I mentioned earlier. Now how you fight is you usually use the dagger to catch your opponent's blade, and during the renaissance parrying daggers were becoming popular, and then thrust with a rapier. And since rapiers are primarily thrusting weapons and have better reach than the dagger, however you can catch with the rapier and stab with the dagger, which are both shown in the game. Although the peacekeeper does some slashes, since she's using what I think is an arming sword and has more slashing capabilities than a rapier. The character also uses a block where she makes a plus or perpendicular angle with her weapons, leaving one of the blades up, holding the opponent's blade, while attacking with the other. This was done to counter an opponent who had a much heavier blade. And when the peacekeeper flips over her opponent and backflips to kick the opponents in the face, that's all fake, sorry to say. I'm sure you all had that figured out already, though. So in summary, the peacekeepers. Fighting style was 
primarily renaissance time period with rapiers and usually with a parrying dagger, although it was and could be done with a dagger and sword, and was done mostly by civilians, not battlefield troops. All in all, the Peacekeeper, the impressive assassin, the shadow of the battlefield, is more like a noble who just needed self-defense and got stuck in a war by accident. I mean, look at that armor, that is definitely not bad already. Either way, it's really cool to see the devs take time and learn this technique and incorporate a character around it. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, comment, or uh, what else you can do with YouTube down below, and I'll catch you guys in whatever video I upload next about games, steel, and history.